What's up guys? It's your boy Iceman. So in this video, we're going to talk about Diablo 4 and the upcoming, or the update that was released like two fucking weeks ago. And I didn't get around to making a video on it until now. Decided to wait a minute, hold off a little bit. I read through it some and it looks kind of interesting. And in addition to such, I'm going to show you guys some changes uh, that are coming for the Project Diablo 2, which I will be playing this upcoming November 6th, I think is the date in which uh, this mod will be available to play for the public, the non-beta. So let me know if you guys are going to be playing Project Diablo 2. It looks toad as fuck, so I'm looking forward to it. First off, the Diablo 4 quarterly update, and this was in September. Now, many of you probably already know about this. They have a skill tree. It's actually a skill tree. I remember early on, uh, last year's BlizzCon, when they showcased D4, folks would tease the uh, skill tree from D4. They'd call it a skill twig because it was very simple. So yeah, it's kind of funny, right? Blizzard decided to make an actual skill tree. And I do like the artistic design to this. And I think it's, I think it's pretty good. <clears throat> Oftentimes my dogs and I, myself included, we compare uh, Diablo 4, or we uh, we say that it should go back to how Diablo 2 was in a lot of ways, you know what I mean? This is Diablo 2. Here's the skill tree. Now you have three sections to it, all right? But it's quite simple, you know what I mean? And of course, you can pump up to 20 points into any of these skills. And at the end of the day, uh, at like a max level character or so, you have like a hundred some skill points to use, all right? So obviously you're gonna have a lot of skills that are unused and you can only max like five in total, right? So there's a lot of strategy in that and it's a damn good thing. And I'm thinking that's what they're gonna do with D4 is that they're not gonna let you max all of these. You know what I'm saying? In fact, I think it even stated somewhere in this article where you're gonna be able to max like one third of them or something of that sort. Now what's kind of unclear to me is, can you say like, let's say here's Meteor, all right? Let's say that's Meteor. Can you start pumping points into that once you get to it or is it just a one point skill that you modify later? I think you can pump points into it like you can with D2. And I think that's a great idea and that's what I'm hoping for because it allows for even more in-depth customization because then not only do you choose to put a point into this, but you also have to choose, do I put five points in this? Do I put 10 points in this? Or do I max this shit out? You know what I'm saying? So I'm hoping that's the way they go. I, I don't know for sure. Let me know in the comments below if you guys have any idea if that's how this shit works. Now, Here's like the roots of the tree, right? And uh, I think folks were saying these are the passive skills. Some folks think that you start somewhere down in this area. So, yeah, I think the skill tree, I think it's pretty cool. And depending on whether or not you can pump points into these individually, I think this will be uh, pretty damn good. Of course, this isn't finished. This is pre-alpha, as you can see. So... I'm hoping that you can pump this shit up. You know what I mean? You can pump a bunch into this or that, and then you just have more decisions to make. Here's some skills, and I like this, all right? This is something that they did that uh, strays away a bit from how it was in Diablo 3, where all of your damage was entirely reliant on the weapon you had in hand. It was fucking bullshit because it really took the power away from the character, right? That's part of the problem. And it put it all into the items. And it took away as well from your character in that it, uh, it took away from the skills and your 
allocation of your skill points because check this out they now give hard damage all right they now give base damage and this is toad i think they might have listened to iceman to be honest with you guys because i bitched about this in the past that the numbers are fucked up in diablo 3 the critical hits that you do that were like in the billions plus it's fucking bullshit and your dps was like in the millions you know these these numbers started going to places where it was difficult for your average folk to comprehend such things. You know what I mean? It was important to keep that shit simple, all right? Just keep those fucking numbers simple. So what if your competitor, uh, say, Path of Exile, I don't know, say that they're hitting in the hundreds of thousands, who gives a fuck? You know what I mean? In Diablo 2... At max, say you're a boson, a godly boson, you're doing like 6,000 damage per hit, all right? You're not doing billions, you're not doing millions, you're not doing hundreds of thousands, that's all a bunch of fucking bullshit. And that's the game a lot of us guys are playing, right? A lot of us toads are playing D2. In fact, a lot of us are going to be playing Project D2 as well, so check that shit out when it releases November 6th. But I think this is a great move, all right? Check it out. Here's Charge Bolt, release six bolts of lightning that course around in an erratic pattern, dealing 18 to 22 damage each. See, them is some small numbers, and that is toad as fuck, all right? So good job to you guys who are working on D4 that you didn't have to give us some big fucked up numbers, all right? Because 18 to 22 is just fine. See, and uh, kind of to go back to what I was talking about a few minutes ago, I'm hoping that we can like maybe max this out. Maybe this skill you can put like 20 points into it. You know what I mean? And then your charge bolt is doing like a thousand damage or something. And maybe there'll even be synergies like in D2, or maybe the synergies will be based on your weapons and armor and items. I don't know. But I'm hoping we can like pump more points into that. All right, let me know if you guys are with me on that. But that is damn toad that uh, they're dealing with small numbers here, and it's doing like a. Uh, it's not just doing percentages. You know what I mean? Like in D3, it just said do 200% damage as charged bolts. It was fucking stupid because it was all just centered around the one weapon you had in hand. Everything that your character was doing in terms of their output and damage. It all had to do with just that one fucking weapon in their hand. So all the skills were basically doing the same uh, damage in comparison to what the main hand weapon was doing. All right. So this allows us to do, say, a lot of damage to our charged bolts and whatever other skill that we master. And maybe buff that with a weapon by doing like like a weapon that adds lightning damage or something. Like, like Griffin's Eye in D2 where it can add up to 20% lightning skill damage, you know, stuff like that, or uh, items that pierce their resistances. And that's another really important thing, and I hope they don't do away with this. It's important that the monsters have immunities, that we have to strategize against this, all right? Uh, you can't just have any character with any damage type and just roll through everything. And then it just doesn't fucking matter that your weapon does poison, lightning, cold, or fire. Who gives a fuck? When I had my characters in Diablo 3, it just didn't fucking matter. I don't know why they even stated that. It's like this weapon does poison damage or these are fire skills. It was all the same fucking shit because none of the monsters were immune to anything. So you didn't have to deal with that. And as far as I remember, their resistances didn't even vary that much on the elements in general. So it was just a fucking waste to say, I'm doing fire here, I'm doing poison here. It just didn't matter. It was all the same shit. So bring back the immunities and bring back uh, resistances to the monsters and that they vary. And they can vary in a themed sort of sense. You know what I mean? Like say you're in hell. And there are the succubi who have, like, flames around them and shit. You know, obviously, they're going to have a pretty damn high resistance to fire because they're surrounded in it all fucking day. So if you try to use, like, a fireball against them, it's not going to be as, um, as impactful as, say, a frozen orb, which should just shatter the shit out of them, that it's cold. You know what I mean? 
It's a direct contrast to their fiery, hellish theme. So I'm hoping they go in that route. And let me know in the comments below if you guys hope so too. And that, like I said, it, it inclines us to strategize when these immunities are at play. Because then you have to dis make decisions. You have to be like, well, I'm going to start leveling up Charged Bolt, but I must remember that there are some enemies in Nightmare and especially Hell that are not only highly resistant to lightning, but they're immune to it. So I'm going to have to spec some into fire skills as well. See, it requires you to think a little bit. And in Diablo 3, you didn't have to fucking do that. You could just be all fire and it didn't even fucking matter. Like I said, because their resistances didn't vary and there were no immunities. So let me know what you dogs think about that. I could bitch about that for a while, but you know what? Fuck that. I'm going to scroll down here a little bit and see what else they have to offer. Uh, they have, uh, like, the Barbarian has this arsenal thing about him, which I think is a great idea, actually. Because you can have, like, a big two-handed weapon, like on D2, when you have your weapons on switch here. See, and I think arsenal would be great in D2. Because I like having javelins on switch or something. And it would be awesome if I could have javelins on switch here, and then a bow right here. And if I could just say, hit... Uh, hit the number three on my keyboard and all of a sudden she'd grab her javelin and just throw a lightning fury and then i could left click or right click and just multi-shot and then like i said hit two on the uh on the keyboard and she'd all of a sudden whip out her javelin and stab with a power strike you know what i mean so that's kind of how the arsenal system works with the barbarian in Diablo 4, and I think that's a damn good idea. Uh, because it's very active then, your gameplay. And I think that's Toad. So they have some weird shit going on with the Sorceress. I didn't really bother to read into it much, but it's it's like her version of the Arsenal system. And it has something to do with, uh, with like synergizing her skills or something, I don't know. So they have different effects. Like maybe with Hydra, you can rune it or synergize it with a different skill and all of a sudden, your Hydra will be walking around and shit. I just made that up, but I, I'm hoping that'll actually be part of it. To have a Hydra that is like a pet that follows you around and be fucking towed. Here's one example. All right, so here's the like non-ruined uh, meteor. And it just, it just casts where you point and it blows shit up. And here's another one where it just randomly casts around when you're attacking. So it doesn't hit in any specific area. It just, it just hits somewhere randomly around your character, but you can be actively attacking while this occurs. So that's pretty cool. I don't mind that. And apparently they're looking into the end game progression system. So we'll see what we do with that. So this is some Project Diablo 2 stuff. So I just wanted to show you guys some of this for a minute. Some stuff that I want that I thought was interesting, like here, for example, check it out. This Sork is actually wearing Templar's Might. They reworked a lot of unique items in this game. Uh, in this mod, they attempted to uh, make some of the less viable ones from the past become more viable now, especially the rare ones. You'd find a Tyrael's Might, and you just sold the fucking thing to Larzuk. Because even though it's cool, it takes up space and it's not very useful. But that's no longer the case in Project D2. And here's Templar's Might that the Sork has, and it actually has a Might Aura. See, so the might is around her feet, and it helps her uh, mercenary, obviously. First half will be a Vada. Yep, the Vada. <clears throat> but here's what they did. Chat. HD wide maggot lair. Bring your friends. The lair is open. The maggot lair? You're now not crowded as fuck in here. Wide screen, wide See? maggot. And obviously it's, uh, it's high res, so... That's epic. They did that with Project D2. Just a few things I'm showcasing here. Here's your mercenary. Everyone mercenaries have pierce on them. Have pierce on them. All kinds of good stuff. Why is there static from the music? Is it so, your mercenaries can now have different stats, like pierce, apparently. 
But beyond that, check it out. You have more item slots. So you can have gloves, boots, and a belt. So this is going to uh, enable even more customization. And I believe Mercs are going to be especially important in Project D2 because of the end game content that we have looked forward to. Uh, there's like uh, incentivized group play uh, because apparently some of these end game dungeons are going to be hard as fuck and you need like a, you don't need a healer class, but you need supporter classes and there's a lot of heal skills added to the paladin, like a healing nova and a healing beam that uh, he can he can emit from the sky onto uh, characters of his choice. So there's a lot of healing skills and stuff like that with the Paladin. I'm considering going Amazon, this Project D2, this uh, upcoming uh, opening first season. And I know I always go Amazon. I was planning on going Assassin. In fact, in Project D2, the Assassin can now whirlwind once again, unlike in Path of Diablo. Uh, as many of you remember from Lord of Destruction, with the Chaos Rune Word Claw, it gave one point of Whirlwind or whatever. So you could Whirlwind as an Assassin. They're a very popular PvP class and just kind of a niche style point build. Now that is back in Project D2, so you can Whirlwind as an Assassin. And she also has a Chain Lightning Trap. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that, man. I'm kind of divided. I want to go like a Chain Lightning Trap Assassin Whirlwind Hybrid or I want to go a uh, like a summoning Amazon who can have up to three Valkyries. Okay. Oh, check this out. A mini Nova on a and her Valkyries power strike, you'll now release a mini Nova. can emit this Nova as well. Um, so it's still going to do the added lightning damage to the main target, but it now deals a secondary effect of a mini lightning Nova, and they shotgun with each other. So... The main target will take the added lightning damage plus the Nova and the targets around it will take just the Nova. So imagine having two or three Valkyries who are emitting those Novas as well that have shotgun effects and that your power strike and the Nova itself can all hit the same target for single target. So it's okay for single target, but of course it's great for some AOE on a summon. And here's um, the Valkyrie, I think. Change the way that Valkyrie works. So Check out the synergies. Now. You, can play a, you can now play a Summoner's on. Look at those synergies. Summoner's on. Uh, like I said, oh, the values earlier, don't get hung up on the values. Because uh, I haven't really balanced the past of the magic tree yet. But, um, yeah, you can now play a full-blown Summon's on with Valkyries. And... Uh, they scale based on the synergies that you decide to go into. That's going to be toad as fuck. Fizz damage. Pierce gives them lightning pierce per level. Penetrate gives them attack rating. Power strike scales their power strike because they use power strike. And critical strike scales their... Well, it gives them critical strike. <laughs> you can check their gear. Someone is on. Watch this. Because they always spawn with random rare gear, but we never know what it is. If I have a weapon on me, we just have to judge it by some of their effects. But now... Full-blown Valk Summoner. Um, another thing we've done too is we made it so that you can inspect players. So you can inspect this out. players on PD2, but not only can you inspect players, it's totally you spot. can also inspect your Valkyrie. There's your Valkyrie. So if you want to reroll your Valkyrie, Sacred Armor Rare, and get the best Valk possible because you're a tryhard min maxer or you're about to <coughs> Uber or whatever it is, you can keep respawning them. Um, you can reroll your Valks until for you certain gear mods. Your Actually a really good like Nova and Frost Nova on hit, you know things like that. Passive magic on their boots or on their uh, on their belt. Min damage. All sorts of crazy shit you can get. ED pike. I don't know if they can roll F gear. Let me know in the comments below. Can your Valkyries roll F real gear? That's toad as fuck. So what I want to do uh, like a is have a summons on who. It's like a hybrid of a sort, right? Maybe I'll use Lightning Fury on her. I don't know. Maybe Immolation Arrow, something like that. But I'd rather be Javelin, I think. So I'm thinking a Lightning Fury hybrid, like summoning Amazon. I think that would be awesome. So kind of leaning toward trying that out. So let me know in the comments what you guys think about that. But yeah, I'm really curious to see how some of these builds can play out. 
So if you guys will like this video, hit the thumbs up button. Let me know what you think about uh, the updates on Diablo 4. As well as these uh, updates that I uh, showcased a bit here on Project D2. A lot of that stuff was dated, as you can see, probably the dates on those videos that I was watching. But it's the latest that I'm familiar with in terms of the Valkyrie build and the Maggot layer just being more open and vast. So just a lot of great additions. They're also uh, allowing for like craftable stacking items. You can stack your runes. So if you find a bunch of bath runes, you can have them just taking up one little space in your inventory. And the same applies for like the Shards of Corruption that are just like the OOCs in uh, Project D2, or uh, Path of Diablo. Now in Project D2, uh, the corrupting of your items is a lot more in depth. There's a lot more stats that they can have, and there's like tiers of corrupting, all right? So there's like the one, per or there's like the 2% tiers of corrupting, where if you corrupt your item, right, say you have an eagle horn or something, and you corrupt it, there's uh, a bunch of stats that it could spawn where there's only a 2% chance it'll it'll hit these stats, right? So very low. So, and those are obviously, you know, the more desirable uh, things that you can slam on items. Like I think there's even a one to skills that you can slam on a weapon. And that's like the A tier uh, corrupting, something of that sort. And then there's a separate uh, item where you can add sockets. It's like Larzuk's puzzle box or something like that. So you can corrupt an item and get like a nice mod on it if you don't get sockets. And you get the mod instead when you slam it. And then you could, if you want, use your Larzux puzzle box and potentially uh, roll sockets on the already corrupted item. So it's very nice, man. And this, this stuff is really adding a lot of depth uh, to the whole item chase and the whole GG A tier items list. So this will be a damn good time is what I'm thinking. So I'll talk to you guys soon. Like the video if you will. Become a patron if you want. Link in the description below. Peace be with you.